Back to school, Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona visited students at Madison STEAM Academy to celebrate the return to in-person learning. Short staff, we visit Chow's Italian restaurant to learn how their business has been affected by this national issue. Get spooked, our movie critic Jalen brings you his movie recommendations for the Halloween season. All of this and more on this week's edition of Buzz in the Bend. Hello and welcome to Buzz on the Bend, Michiana's award-winning student talk show. I'm Andrew Mestikar from Riley High School. I'm Isaiah Robinson, also from Riley High School. And I'm Melanie Sanchez from John Adams High School. So, um, homecoming is coming up for Riley next week. Yeah, that's right, man. How do you guys feel about that? I'm ready. I've never really dressed up. Usually I do some days, but I'm, this year I'm going to do all of them, the for sure. Yeah, I mean, we're seniors. You got you to gotta yeah. do it all. Right, as right. an under... Well, when I was more of an underclassman, I really didn't care about it, but knowing this is senior year, you just go big or go home. Really, for everything, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Each year, people observe National Hispanic Heritage Month by recognizing the contributions made to this country by people of Hispanic descent, including those whose ancestors immigrated from Latin countries. Riley students are designing a bulletin board to feature the Latin countries of origin of their students. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona made a special visit to students at Madison STEAM Academy last week as part of the return to school road trip. He was joined by Indiana Secretary of Education Katie Jenner. His visit was in celebration of the return to in-person learning. Congratulations to Swanson Traditional School, which was named a 2021 National Blue Ribbon School by U.S. Department of Education. The award is given to schools based on their progress in closing achievement gaps or overall academic performance among student subgroups. 325 schools nationwide and six schools in Indiana were chosen for this award this year. Restaurant staffing issues have remained a problem during the pandemic for a number of reasons, including unemployment checks, low wages, and career changes. Andrew Mescar visited a locally owned restaurant to see how they've been surviving the shortage. All across the U.S., many restaurants are understaffed and are struggling to get by. We visited Chow's, a locally owned restaurant, to find out how they're dealing with the crisis. I am Italian and I own a small restaurant in downtown South Bend. I basically have one or two employees, the most, and that was the most we had because we cannot afford anything because we were not making any money. Employees, they are working in this kind of the, the, the business. They are afraid that something happened, so they, they went in a different field. The pro biggest problem is now to find the people who want to work in this kind of the environment, you know. According to the New York Times, 80 to 85 percent of businesses are understaffed and are having a hard time finding staff. We don't found the people they want to work, and uh, it's hard to find any people. We have to pay more, and also we have to pay more about the food. The food cost for us right now, because they got the same problem, they don't found employees, so try to pay more, and uh, the food cost is almost double right now for everything. Reporting for SBS TV, I'm Andrew Messicar. With um. The topic of working shortages, I know bus drivers have been kind of upset about um, like their pay and stuff, so uh, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think the corporation should raise their wages, as, like along with like teachers. Because teachers teach the future children, exactly. so it's obvious that they should get more. Yeah, but um, for me, I just feel like when you like sign the contract for a job, you know what you're going into. And I feel like unless they say they're going to give you promotion and they don't, then I, I get that, but like, yeah. if they haven't said anything, then... Like you already know what you signed up for, you know? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. good thing they have passion for what they do because yeah, I can sure. never do that. Yeah. 
The National Day of Remembrance for Victims of Murder took place on September 25th to honor the memories of those who've lost their lives because of violent crime. Danuel Rodriguez shows us how Clay High School helped mark the day. It's known as a wave in the wind. The mobile art installation was created by Clay High School graphic art design students to commemorate the National Day of Remembrance, which honors victims of gun violence. I wanted to uh, do something that seemed respectful but also honoring of the people that um, passed away to gun violence. Um, I did some research and found that orange was the color or the ribbon color of uh, gun violence awareness. So I went ahead and did that. The Clay students made 147 t-shirts with the names, ages, and death dates of South Bend's gun violence victims over the last 10 years. Each reflected the physical size of the person it represented. We had two toddlers, I believe, so it was like one and two year old. Um, we had a couple under 10 years old, so we did try to, um, we were asked to correspond them by age and also by gender. So we had, I believe, three different like adult sizes and then we had the children's sizes, you know, just to see the difference of, of each individual person. The mobile display will move around South Bend for the next 30 days. While in Howard Park, the installation caught the attention of this park goer. Just crazy because looking up there, I recognized so many names of people I knew, of heard about, mutual friends, and it just really shocked me like, oh my gosh, I know like half of the names up there. It took the graphic arts class about a week to make all the shirts. They say the emotional project really made them think. Remembrance, it is to remember those lost, but then I guess also to think ahead of, you know, preventing that sort of violence in our city. I think seeing the shirts makes it more surreal because it's like, you know, each one of those shirts represents a person. And you can only imagine if those people were wearing those shirts, how many people would be standing over there right now. And that doesn't even cover everyone that's been murdered in South Bend. Gone, but never forgotten. May their legacies live on. For SBS TV, I'm Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, gun violence is like a very serious topic and I really don't condone that. So, like, what do you guys think about gun violence personally? Obviously, gun violence is gun violence and it's just plain awful, man. We lose people right. all the time, yeah. every day. Especially in our community, it's crazy. Like, if we lose so many in our community, imagine so many, like, around the country. Like, the number must be, like, really high. Yeah. Which is really sad, but... It, I, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but, like, you know, like, this issue is, like, really big and, you know, how... You know, SBS TV covered this, and they even made a whole song about it. So, it, I mean, it just shows that it needs to have more attention brought to um, yeah. the issue. Gun sure. violence in general all over the U.S. needs to be brought forth more. Exactly. Many classes and programs were on pause the past year due to COVID, including live music and theater. Mason Cuevas met up with the Riley Marching Band to see how it has affected their program. COVID brought everything to a halt last year, including extracurricular activities. I caught up with the Riley Band to see how much they've been preparing for this upcoming competition in Crown Point, Indiana. Half the band has never marched and played. Freshmen and sophomore have never marched and played because we didn't march last year. So that's everyone's challenge in marching band, uh, and we've had the same challenge. We've had great leadership with uh, some of the upperclassmen. They've really helped the freshmen. There's a lot of fundamentals that they have not forgotten. It's really just been trying to drill the fundamentals in them and we're still practicing them to this day, after, even after having gone to a big competition like Crown Court. Things they've been having some difficulties with, like staying in step and spacing. Some have even just completely disregarded the rolling of their feet, but it's getting a lot better now. It's been it's been quite a challenge working with a lot of the uh, underclassmen because they you know had a year off they haven't been playing at all for a while and that's kind of one of the one of the bigger challenges is getting them to the level where they should be. Another thing is just you know the, their the desire to be good is it's kind of hard for them to understand what they are doing until you know a couple of years later down the line. So the earlier they realize what they're doing this for, the better they'll be. The more they work and they repeat the positive things, 
day after day, then that shows off on Saturday. Reporting for Buzz in the Bend, I'm Mason Cuevas. So I know like the band is having like, you know, trouble right now getting back into things, especially yeah. since they didn't have really like a Chances season of March. Perform, yeah. yeah, exactly. So their experience is like none, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right. I pretty much hear since it's pretty much like one half of people, so like the sophomores and the freshmen didn't really have a lot of time to do much marching right. at all. So it's going to be interesting this year. Right. I think sure. it's definitely going to be a little bit frustrating for yeah. like the um, directors and stuff like that. So, mm. but I think I think they'll figure it out. They'll right. get back to we it. We can we can wish them the best of luck for sure. Yeah. yeah. Recently, I sat down with South Bend School Assistant Superintendent Brandon White to find out more about his role and goals for the corporation. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. All right, so what is your role in the school corporation? So my title is the Assistant Superintendent of Academics. Nice, how do you like it so far? I like it, it's um, very busy, um, keeps me moving, but I really enjoy um, serving both our students and our teachers and helping improving instruction across the district. What are some tasks you do as an Assistant Superintendent? So I um, am responsible for overseeing all of the schools, elementary, middle, and high, as well as our special education department, curriculum and instruction, bilingual education, and all athletics. Nice, nice. Uh, what is your view on vaccination and masks? So um, one of the things is I'm, I am very happy that we are back in school as much as possible. And if that means that our students have to be in a mask, I'd rather have them in-person instruction rather than at home like we experienced mm -hmm. um, last school year. Myself, personally, I'm vaccinated as well as the, the members of my family. And so although I encourage vaccination, I think that has to be a decision that an individual has to make on their own. Nice, nice. Um, what is your vision for the South Bend Corporation? So Dr. Cummings and the school board have been very clear that literacy is our focus. And so my vision as the lead academic officer for the district is to ensure that teachers have the professional learning and the resources to provide high quality instruction that leads to increased literacy scores, but also that it, we are ensuring that when our students leave our high schools, they're prepared for college or the career that they choose. Sounds good. Um, how does your role like impact student learning? So although I'm not in the classroom each and every day, like our amazing teachers, my job is to make sure that we are establishing clear expectations, giving them feedback on those expectations, but also making sure they have the resources and technology to carry out their job. So like for this type of class, like the CTE, will the same thing apply? Absolutely. Um, so we make sure that this program in particular has the technology, um, for example, helping with hosting the website, making sure that um, computers are up to date, making sure that staffing's in place, um, all of those things to make sure that we have a quality radio and television program. Sounds good. So um, thanks for coming. We enjoyed Absolutely. It. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks. On the next virtual Talks with Todd, Superintendent Todd Cummings and Brandon White will discuss the return to in-person learning, academics, and related issues on Tuesday, October 26th at 10 a.m. And now for the latest action in South Bend sports, here's Cooper Van Driesch with SBS TV Sports Zone. You're entering the SBS TV Sports Zone. I'm Cooper Van Driesch, back with another Sports Zone update. We start off this edition of Sports Zone with breaking news from the Riley Athletic Department. Due to a positive case on both the girls' soccer team and boys' football team, both teams have been forced to go into a quarantine period. More updates to come on the games for both of those teams as the story develops. Moving over, last Friday, half the South Bend schools were back under the lights for another edition of Friday Night Football. Both Adams and Clay took losses to conference opponents New Prairie and Jimtown, with the Eagles falling with a final score of 9-0 and the Colonials also falling with a final score of 69-8. The Riley vs. Washington game was canceled due to the previously mentioned COVID-19 case closing down the Riley team. Three out of the four teams will be back on the field tonight. Let's take a look at those matchups. The Clay Colonials have an away game against Calumet High School at 8 p.m. The Adams Eagles have a home game against Elkhart High School at 7 p.m. The Washington Panthers have an away game against Jimtown High School at 7 p.m. And the Riley Wildcats will not be playing this evening. 
On the other end of fall sports, all South Bend High School cross country teams will have their NIC meet this weekend at Oxwell Park in Elkhart, starting at 9 a.m. Sectionals is just around the corner for both boys and girls soccer teams, and as well as boys tennis. Girls golf had their sectionals just two weeks ago. Our very own Sage Grohl caught up with the Adams team. Boom! Manpower. Let's go. Junior Megan Carter is describing her strongest swing. And that says something for the Adams girls golf team as they have a lot of new blood on their varsity team. Uh, we had many new players to the varsity situation, which can be nerve wracking. Uh, like when you go to a tournament and the first hole, you can have, you know, 50 to 100 people standing around and it's intimidating. I always take a few deep breaths and think of my positive teammates. Junior Megan Carter is first in the Adams lineup, along with freshman Catherine Swain in second, filling out the team roster with Leah Goslin, Grace Hartman, and Joey Wargney. The Lady Eagles earned third place at Penn Sectional last Friday with 429 to top both Elkhart and St. Joseph. It, it is a really hard sport. I would tell them that, you know, it's something you really, really have to work at and you have to, like, Give it some patience. As I look forward to next year, Coach Curran has just one hope. Well, next year, I certainly hope someone doesn't hit a house on a hole, but um, you know, we'll focus on we'll focus on hitting the ball straight and not as many times. Um, it's a mental game, so we're working on doing better with that. Because once we get past that, we're going to be really good. For SBS TV Sports Zone, I'm Sage and I Grohl. This past Wednesday, the Northern Indiana Conference held a meeting with some of the strongest student athlete leaders from 11 out of the 12 schools in the conference. Students that attended the conference got to learn the basics of leadership, such as perseverance and teamwork, and how to use them in a sports environment, while also getting to know fellow student athletes from other schools in the NIC. In college athletics, the number nine ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish will take on the number seventh ranked Cincinnati Bearcats at home tomorrow. You can learn more about the game and the chances the Irish have on winning on my sports radio show, The Independence, which is on tonight at 5.30 on WTL 91.7 FM. Before I go, I'd like to give a life update. Two weeks ago, I was accepted in the prestigious intern program for Swimming World Magazine. This past week, my first article was published. You can find more information on my Instagram. Just search for SBSTV Cooper. That's all for me. Now to Sang Do with an eSports update. Wonderful. I'm Sang Do with Esports Manix, where I'll be talking about the latest esports news and drama. After not qualifying for the 2021 League of Legends World Championship, G2 Esports are planning to find replacements for their top laner Martin Wonder Hansen, support Mihail Mickey X Mihail, and head coach Fabian Grabs Lohman. None of the three members are officially out of G2 yet, but it's expected that the organization will go through major changes ahead of the 2022 season. Wonder's buyout is $2.3 million, while Mickey X is available for $1.7 million, and Grab's contract is available for about $187,000. In the late August, the organization negotiated with their mid laner Ramis Caps Winter to have an additional year extension. The future of the attack damage carry, or known as ADC, Martin Reckless Larson, is still up in the air, although G2 has an interest in other ADCs in the region. Candy Crush All-Stars recently began in the U.S. It is an upcoming tournament that puts the best Candy Crush players against one another in a series of matches. The tournament is hosted by reality TV personality Khloe Kardashian. Players who are in the U.S. and have passed level 25 in Candy Crush can participate in the tournament. An esports team, 100 Thieves, is reportedly parting ways with Joshua Steele Nissan from his Valorant roster and will be replaced by Aaron Boy Tao. However, 100 Thieves has not officially revealed their roster changes and the situation can change. The team recently finished in the top four of a tournament called VCT Masters Berlin after being eliminated by Envy in the semifinals. Steele has reported that he couldn't focus and was drawing blanks, which was detrimental to the rest of the team. That's it for me, now back to the anchor desk. Thanks, Sang and Cooper. Well, it's been a while since we've hosted the Big Whoop show, so we thought we would bring you with a mini Whoop segment featuring a recent fashion event. 
Hey, it's Aaron on Hi, the carpet. Aaron. Hi. Okay, so do you want to tell us a little bit about who you're wearing? Right now I'm wearing Gucci, you know, exclusive, one of a kind. It's representing, you know, like the old fashioned, you know, the flowers on okay. the on the coat, you know. Yeah, something, you know, very basic, but yeah. really nice. Okay, very neat. What are you wearing? I'm wearing Dior, so I'm happy that they sent me this. Hey. <laughs> right, but you know, I'll let you go now. Um, see you in the studio. See you in the studio. <laughs> Welcome to what we like to call the Mini Whoop Show with your hosts, Melanie and Aaron. And today, Aaron, I don't know if you know, but like a recent event happened, which was the Met Gala. So what are your opinions of, of like the outfits that people wore this year? I think the Met Gala was amazing. I feel like all the outfits were different and very good and really like handmade, like really good. Right. And I know the Met Gala has like a theme. I, I don't know what the theme was this year. It was, was old Hollywood. Old Hollywood. Oh, OK, well, that's nice. Well, I guess to start off with the first outfit that we'll be talking about today, we're going to start off with Lil Nas X because he wore three different outfits, which is totally different. Totally different than what most people do. So that's interesting. So let's take a look and look at it. His first outfit was a big gold cape. And then the second outfit was a gold armor suit. And then the third outfit, a Versace bodycon covered with crystals. Okay. So, what do you think about this outfit? That was something totally different. Nobody has right. ever done that. On do, you, do you like any of his outfits or like none of them at all? Um, some of them. Some of them? Which not one was not your, that much. Which one was your least favorite? The cape. Elaborate. The cape. Why? It was too much. It was too much? But I did like the armor, like the gold armor. It kind of made him look like a um, superhero. Right, right. So, if you had to rate all three different outfits, what would you give him a rating out of 10? I'll give it a seven. A seven for which one? All of them. For all of them, so as a whole. I yeah, as a whole, a seven. Okay. And then you? Well, personally, I feel like it didn't really fit with the theme. Does that make sense? I, I feel like it didn't really go with the theme. So if we're basing it off the theme, then I would kind of give it a five because I don't know. I feel like it, it, it was original, but not too original. If that makes sense. And moving on, we have Olivia Rodrigo, which you know she's like it's her first Met Gala, and you know she's like 18, I think, which. That's crazy, like going to the Met Gala. So let's look at her outfit. So it's a rock and roll um, look, and it was designed by Saint Laurent. So what do you think of this outfit? I, I loved her outfit. Hers was, I love the feather on the um, shoulder. So out of 10, I give hers an eight. An eight, an eight. I honestly think it was a little bit basic, but you know, um, since it was her first Met Gala, I guess you could kind of cut her some slack. Yeah. Cause it's kind of a lot of pressure, so. I mean, I would say I would give hers an 8 too, actually, because it wasn't ugly. So, yeah, it's an 8. Okay, so now in the third outfit. We have Megan Thee Stallion, who wore like an old Hollywood um, type of style with a hot girl twist, and it was designed by Coach. So, what do I you thought think? hers was amazing. I liked it. it. Her hair went well with the outfit, and then it also brought out her skin color. So, I thought it right, was Right, right. Nice. I mean, it, wasn't def it was definitely not something that I pictured her wearing. I thought she was going to wear something extra but I like she really did go in with the theme so I'd have to give her yeah a and sometimes rating. it's best to go basic than to do extra so I thought right. she wore it really well right so I would also give her an 8 I'll so. give her a 10 that's all we have for you guys today join us next time for a full episode of Big Whoop coming soon I'm Melanie and I'm Aaron and see, see you, you next, next time, time. it's October and you know what that means it's time for pumpkins campfires and spooky movies here's Jalen with his top picks for Halloween movies Spooky season starts today, so let's take a look at some of my favorite Halloween movies. First up, we have Hocus Pocus, directed by Kenny Ortega. It's a movie about three witches from the 17th century Salem being brought into the 90s by unsuspecting teenagers. Next up, we have Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Jack Skellington gets bored with the same old tricks and treats and decides to try something a little more jolly. Frankenweenie is a story about a young boy and his dog. When the dog dies tragically, the boy decides to bring him back to life and this spirals into more problems. Finally, James and the Giant Peach, directed by Henry Selick. This movie follows James as he escapes his cruel aunts on a journey to New York City and makes new friends inside of a giant peach. All of these movies are Halloween must watches and I couldn't recommend them more. But honestly, this year, I think I'm gonna be watching Hocus Pocus. I remember watching that movie as a kid all the time, and it's been a while since I've seen it, so I think I'm gonna try and refresh myself on it. Anyways, back to you guys. 
So are you guys excited for the Halloween season? Bet. Of course I am, man. Because, you know, everyone's favorite Halloween movies are, you know, they're reruns, but they're just back on TV. Yeah. Right, right. Like What's yours, Andrew? Man, that's a tricky one. Come back to me. Melanie. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> My, I know for okay. me, you, probably, you guys probably know this, uh, Halloween Town. Remember that um, one Disney when we were oh, younger? Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. I can watch that any day. Honestly, tell me why I feel like the Halloween movies on Disney Channel are something else. Yeah. Like, it's a good, it's a good feeling, like even though nostalgia. It's, even though it's, like, not that scary, but it's on no. Disney. It's still, yeah. like, good. It's, it's still Halloween it's related. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, they, they take away the horror aspect, but, yeah. like, still, like, keep it, like, Halloween themed, which yeah. is really nice, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah. Now it's time for this week's edition of Bruce on the Loose with Would You Rather. What's up, y'all? It's Bruce from Bruce on the Loose. I got my Would You Rather questions right here on my phone. Let's go ask these people and see what their answers are. Right, would you rather be the smartest person in the classroom or the funniest person in the classroom? Smartest person in the classroom. Why? Um... Well, being funny doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, you're right, man. Would you rather lose your vision or your hearing? Uh, honestly, I'd rather use lose my hearing, bro. Why? Because, like, I can only imagine not being able to see. That's, that sucks. And if you can't hear nothing, you feel me? It's just, it ain't that bad as losing your vision, bro. Would you rather be stuck in a train or on a bus? I don't know. Why? Because a train, boy, that mug, that mug could make you die. I'm straight. Bus can too. And they can't. It can't break the window. Uh, would you rather be on a broken ski lift or a broken elevator? What is a ski lift? You know, like the ski lift, the thing that takes you to the top of the mountain, and you go down the hill? The elevator, depending on how, how I mean, what floor I'm on. And why? I ain't get on no ski lift no more way in the air. Would you rather be the smartest or funniest person in the room? Um, I think I'd rather be um, funny. Why? Because why not crack a few jokes here and there? Would you rather be able to speak to any animal or speak any language? Any animal. Why? Because why not? Would you rather be 10 minutes early or 20 minutes late? 10 minutes early. Why? Hmm. <laughs> I'd rather be early and late because we get cut, get cut off for being late. So. Would you rather be in jail or homeless? Ooh, jail. Why? Because if I'm homeless, I'm not eating nothing. I'm just out on the street, cold, no covers, just out there looking bummy. I'd rather be in jail because they at least they feed me. Would you rather have? Or would you rather always have to wear oversized clothes or small clothes? I'd rather wear small clothes. Why? Because it's gonna fit me better. Would you rather always be 10 minutes late or always 20 minutes early? Always 10 minutes late. Why? Because I'm always late to stuff. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's Bruce on the Loose, man. Them would you rather questions was crazy and wicked. What's up, man? You know what you should do next? What? You should eat one of the hottest peppers ever. You know what? That's actually a good idea. I might do that. Let me know if y'all wanna do that. Hit us up on social media for any challenges, man. And that's it. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Buzz in the Bend. As always, be sure to click that subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get notified when we upload a new video. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and check me out on TikTok at IsaiahSBSTV. And tune into our 24 student radio station, WETL 91.7 FM The Mix. Find out how you can become a WTL sponsor by visiting www.sbstvradio.org. Have a great day.